For some reason, we got this idea in our head that it has to be either God or science. On one side, we say, well, everything we've learned in science kind of disproves and explains away God, so we don't really need God anymore. On the other side, we say, well, I really believe in God, so I'm just going to kind of ignore everything we've learned in science over the past 500 years because, well, science is probably just wrong. But I don't think the problem is whether it's just this one or that one. It's that we think it has to be just one or the other. When think about it, even if you were a non-physical super intellect and you wanted to bring a physical universe into existence, first, you'd need the stuff to make it out of. Second, you'd have to come up with how all that stuff was going to come together to form things. And third, you'd probably do it in a way that's organized and makes sense. Or in other words, you'd have to come up with science. So then it wouldn't be about is it just this one or that one. It's about other signs of intent and rationality, order, mind, in the science. Or not. You decide. The existence of our entire universe and everything in it comes down to about 30 numbers. Physicists call these the physical constants. Now these numbers, as I understand them, are fixed values of a fundamental physical condition we find in our universe. For example, the force of gravity or the expansion rate of the universe, right down to the subatomic, such as the mass of a proton or electromagnetic force. Now here's the amazing part. Each one of these numbers are so perfectly precise and so balanced with one another that if any one of them were off, plus or minus, the slimmest fraction, in some cases, literally this much, there would be no life and no universe as we know it. For example, if the gravitational constant were just a hair bigger or smaller, the stars of the early universe would be too hot or too cool to produce any life essential elements. If the electromagnetic force were just a hair stronger or weaker, atoms couldn't form into molecules and the entire universe would be a giant cloud of subatomic particles. If the mass of a tiny little proton was just a tiny bit bigger, there'd be no hydrogen, which means no hydrogen stars, which means no carbon and oxygen made in those stars, which basically means no water and no biology. So it appears, to most physicists, not to all, that since the very beginning, the entire universe has been perfectly tuned for one thing. Now physicists admit they have no idea how these numbers came to be so perfectly and they all agree it would be unreasonable to think that it all just happened by chance. So according to, there are only two possible explanations. Either these numbers were set by a super intellect or they occurred naturally in one universe amidst trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions of other universes that we could never possibly know exist. Now there's not a shred of scientific evidence to support either of these. So both require a giant... It takes about 2 billion lines of unique handwritten code by over 25,000 engineers and a vast empire of computers and data centers spread throughout the entire globe to run Google. It takes over 3 billion letters of unique genetic code arranged in a precise, specific manner written inside a cell weighing less than a few thousand millionths of a gram to run you, a far more complex and superior system than all of Google. Now imagine looking at all that Google code and then me telling you it all just kind of evolved together on its own somehow.
It makes perfect sense to me that the God of the universe would choose to develop our bodies out of the very environment in which we are to live, survive, and flourish in. Actually, the Bible kind of says so. But evolution has no answers when it comes to the origins of life, or why we, out of every species on Earth, at some point went from this, duh, to thinking, speaking, writing, art making, imagining, loving, reflecting, self aware, reasonable creatures. Or in other words, so what makes more sense? That life and intelligence and the ability to think and love comes from something that already has life and intelligence and thinks and loves? Or that it comes from this? In Big Bang, most physicists agree that there had to be a beginning to the universe, even if you believe in the multiverse theory. So the million dollar question is, how did we go from this to this? Just look at your hand and ask yourself, what is it that's holding my hand together? What's holding it into existence right now as we speak? Well, you might say flesh and blood and skin and bones or whatever. Okay, so what's holding the flesh and bones together? Well, you might say a whole bunch of cells and things like that. Okay, what's holding the cells together? Oh, then you'll say a whole bunch of molecules. Well, what's holding the molecules together? Well, it's a whole bunch of atoms. Okay, so what is it that's holding the atoms together in your hand right now, even as we speak? Well, that would be a bunch of super complicated math and energy. Now, first question, can you see or touch or destroy energy? No, you can't. And second question, where do you think all this math that just makes sense comes from? A mind or nothingness? Well, according to Max Planck, Nobel Prize winner and founder of quantum physics, we must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. And this mind is the matrix of all matter. So therefore, it would appear that all the matter in the entire universe is held together and held into existence at this very instant by an unseen, indestructible mind. And this is simply what we call 